Hey everyone, this is Chris and Sandy Vint with the Chris and Sandy Show, where we get up close and personal with some amazing guests throughout the entertainment industry. And today, like I see on every episode, we've got a great one for you. Who do we have? Uh, we have the legendary Misty Rowe with us today. Happy Days fans know her as Wendy the Car Hop. Hee Haw fans know her as the bubbly blonde who never stopped smiling. Marilyn Monroe fans know her as the first person to ever portray Marilyn in a major motion picture. And others know her for the thousands of stage productions and television appearances that she's made. And we're excited to have her on the show today. So, yes. Misty, welcome. Welcome. Thank you so much. How are you all doing? We're oh, doing, doing good. great. How about you? Well... <laughs> <laughs> you know, because After of the a little technical and the self isolation and all that, I'm finally going back on stage. Uh, oh, wow. In, about in our neck of the woods. Yeah, yeah. Us in yeah. our area. Yeah, in your neighborhood, uh, the historic Savannah Theater. Oh, that's Downtown awesome. Savannah. It's just beautiful this time of year. It's yeah. just always the background. fine. Yeah. yeah. So well, I'm my similar. favorite Patsy Cline singer in, and we have a live band and, awesome. you know, because people are kind of hesitant to still get out there, but everybody wants to go. Oh, of course. Yeah. I'm a member of Equity Union and they make the entire production be vaccinated and um, right. all the people right. on stage in the band are vaccinated. Oh, wow. oh, and definitely. the Savannah Theater uh, redid their filtration system. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So I didn't know that. They found any kind of viruses or anything in the air. Yeah. So you probably know about it more than we do. And we're from here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, my first time back on stage, the Savannah Theater is like my backyard. And yeah, I, I feel at home there. I oh, do. Wow. Oh, okay. So you recognize the background, huh? I do. I do. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't know if you've been down here since they built the uh, at the back. Um, what's it called again? Oh, what's that? The River Street thing. Oh, oh yeah. The plant. Yeah, Riverside the plant Riverside. District. Yeah, the new hotels. There's a couple of new yeah. hotels there and a oh, lot of new shops. They revitalized the one yeah. side of River Street. Really nice. Oh, very Can nice. I, yeah. I love walking down there. I do. And I love having dinner outside and looking at the water. And I love the little area by the Savannah Theater because there's a little square, you know, Savannah has all those little parks that are squares. I think like 23 of those, yeah. And the one across the theater from me, they shot Forrest Gump. Yep. Right. Yeah. yeah right. So it's kind of a lot of fun and the horse-drawn carriage rides and all oh, that. Yes. Yeah. So, so were you Hee Haw fans? We were. We were. I remember watching. Yeah, yeah. and that's what my been, parents were. And that's what's yeah. been crazy about our show because we launched our show mm -hmm. January of 2020, and we had no idea where it was going to grow to. And all of a sudden, we're getting people like you on where where we've heard on the radio, we've heard watched on TV, and everything. So it's been. And my mom doesn't know everyone that who they are, but she knows you. Show, but she knows oh. who you are. <laughs> <laughs> she was so excited. <laughs> Well, I've been very blessed to have such a long career. and Which is unusual. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't say I was a big star, but I worked with big stars, you know. And I <laughs> never stopped working until the pandemic. Oh, I did take nine months off when I had my baby. Yeah. But other than that. <laughs> and, you know, speaking of the pandemic, you know, we all, everybody's went through this in oh, different yes, phases and all that. So how has COVID affected what you do in the last 18 months? And what have you done to kind of get through this? Well, it completely shut down my business and my husband's business because he's a producer of, of live musicals. Oh, and okay. Yeah, he just had Forever Motown at the Savannah Theater. Oh. And for 18 months, we, we couldn't work. And now things are opening up again. And I was blessed because uh, Scott England, he's a publisher and he writes books on country stars. He just did oh, one on really? William Golden. But during the pandemic, he did one on me. Oh, wow. <laughs> Oh, and it's called Misty Memories. Oh, 
and yeah. it is my entire life, the good and the bad. And there are 225 pictures in it of wow. all the people I worked with, the big stars like Kenny Rogers or Elton John or Waylon Jennings and my time on Happy Days as Wendy the Car Hop. So I had to get all these pictures for him. And I went through boxes and boxes. And he told me, Scott England said, you know, Misty, every celebrity or sports figure has a box. <laughs> memorabilia and pictures and news clippings. And I want that box. And because of the pandemic, we couldn't meet in person. So we Zoomed like we are now uh, three times a week for four months. And I sent him not one box, I sent him four. Oh, and I wow. went through, and my mother had a box she left me from the time I was born, all the things she had saved. And I went through all this because I didn't want to send duplicates and I put them in piles on the tables, then on the couch, then on the stairs. And, you know, and I got upstairs into my husband's office and he said, leave me my chair. <laughs> it's the only place I have to sit. And because everything was all over the dining room table, we had to eat in bed for four months wow. <laughs> on these old TV trays. So uh, I wrote the story of my life and my career wow. during the pandemic. It's called Misty Memories. And I hope people will read it. And a lot of fans have, and they take pictures when they get their book. They take a picture of it and they put it on Facebook. So I know they got it. And sometimes we have Zoom signings where I sign the book on Zoom so they can see it. And that's what I did. And I walked a lot and I prayed a lot. And finally a vaccine came about and people said, well, are you? you're not getting that, are you? And I said, I'm going to be the first one in line because I want to go back to what? You do. I do. The, the God-given talents, such as they are, that I have. And because I always worked with great singers and great comics, uh, whether it was on TV or movie or stage. And I miss that so much. And I miss the laughter and the applause and seeing people after the show, which they kind of don't let me do now because everybody's got to be safe. I mean, at, at Kirkman yeah, yeah. Hall, everybody just like runs up the exit now. But um, I think I'll feel safe in Savannah. And during the pandemic, I did something that horrified my daughter. <laughs> Oh, no. because she's my she's my zoom coordinator and my memorabilia executor okay i took my fans into my personal facebook page oh well and oh, goes no. mom no you can't do that you have them follow you i sent up an instagram account so they can follow you i said but that's kind of cold <laughs> <laughs> And, and everybody had problems and everybody was isolating and lots of people were getting depressed. So oh I have accepted my fans into my personal Facebook page and they know about my life and the things I'm doing. And they, I see pictures of their kids. That's how we got connected. Yeah, I pray for people who, who are having surgery or if someone's depressed, I say, well, go out and walk amongst green things. Oh, yeah. That's what my grandma used to tell me to do. So I think this time during the pandemic, although it's been lonely for a lot of people, I think we've actually gotten to know each other better because it's a we're doing very human things. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. We agree. Yeah, I mean, that's like with mm -hmm. us, you know, we launched this show January of 2020. I've been watching it. I, I well, I, yeah, I've been seeing all the steps you're taking and we became <laughs> on Facebook. <laughs> and, and, you know, yeah, it's grown more than we, we could ever, ever imagine at this point. And we owe most of the growth to it because of the pandemic. Yes. That, isn't that amazing? And, you know, my mom always said, well, 
you know, if one door closes, another door opens, or in my case, it was like a window of opportunity. I wrote my book. And it was my daughter had wanted me to write a book for the longest time. And I never had time. Yeah. And and I said, if I write a book, who's gonna buy it? And she said, I will. Um, but my mother got Alzheimer's. Oh, wow. She had a very long time and I watched over her a very long time. And my daughter said, you know, Nanny, that's what she called my mom, mm-hmm. her grandma. She said she got Alzheimer's and she couldn't remember a lot of things, Mama. And if that should happen to you, I want you to have a book. I want you yeah. to have all your memories down mm-hmm. and then I'll read them back to you. <laughs> <laughs> you might not know about it but hey you'll get to hear hey, it. but now i have all these wonderful pictures in the book <laughs> you'll get to hear about all the great stories you live yeah 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 well one of the things that was you know right before i um i wrote the book kenny rogers died and that was such a sad time uh-huh. but a lot of people don't know i don't know if you can see this picture of me mm-hmm. in my wedding dress Kenny, oh, Rod- yeah. we see it. Kenny Rogers took that photo. Oh, wow. oh that's amazing. So wow. It is amazing. His hobby was photography. And of course, uh, my uh, one of my best friends on the show was Marianne Rogers. And she was married to Kenny for 13 years. So wow. the whole time that they met and we were friends and all the fun we had, and he took a lot of photographs of my face, which I'm so glad now, because when you're older, you think, oh, I don't want to look in the mirror. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and, and there it is. It, you know, he spent a lot of time lighting me. And he used to tell me that I smiled too big. So <laughs> he, would, he would wait till he got that smile the way he wanted it to be before he clicked the camera. So there are a lot of pictures in there that people have never seen. And there are pictures of me with Elton John when I met Elton. When I went to London and I actually got to model the seven year itch dress, the actual one that Mary Monroe wore at the medical God. So it, you know, it's been a great life. I've had a lot of sadness and ups and downs too. Like everybody. I, yeah, and I wrote about that. And a lot of people, when they say, oh, I got your book and I, I can't wait to read it or I read your book and it meant so much to me. And I asked them, what was your favorite story and what was your favorite picture? And they always tell me. Yeah. And to a lot of people, it's different. Mm-hmm. One woman, she was so funny. She said, well, my favorite story was the divorce story and what she did that you and Ronnie Stillman did to your ex husbands <laughs> People will tell the truth. Huh? Yes. <laughs> and Ronnie Stillman actually called me up and she said, I am reading your book, Misty, and I am laughing out loud. I'm so glad we were young together, you know, and Lulu and you know he haw honeys with uh kathy lee gifford played my sister on that and everybody a lot of people don't know that was a spinoff of he haw my mom and kathy lee gifford was my sister and kenny price was my dad i mean what a hoot so i have pictures Mm -hmm. from that too and one of the most interesting things my publisher scott england thought about my life was my backstory. Mm-hmm. How did I get into show business? And people always ask me that. Yeah. And I was I was pretty poor. I was not college educated. And I did some strange things to make money. I mean one time they stuffed me in a Morton salt box. <laughs> and another time I mo- modeled for a tool company and it was called rigid tool and i'm standing there with this big tool and you know just just crazy stuff i even gave out energy bars dressed in a bikini and radish leaves for um there was a health food store called radiant radish it was mm-hmm. owned by brian wilson you know the beach boy 
Oh, and, yeah. And I, I was so poor at the time, you know, and I was so young. I would yeah. do these little part-time jobs mm -hmm. just to make a living. Till but I got it created, <laughs> it made you who you are doing all that too, because yeah. <laughs> you take all that away, you probably wouldn't have been a, the success you've been. Mm -hmm. Well, it, thank God people took pictures back then and they were real photographs, like not on your phone. <laughs> I have all these crazy pictures and I gave them to Scott England. I did not choose the pictures for the book. Okay. I did not edit the book. And when he gives you the proof of the book, he said, you can take out whatever you don't want in, but you can't add anything. Uh, oh, okay. And, and yeah. so when the book came to me, it was such a surprise to see the photographs he had chosen. And he also did these witty little lines under each photograph, you know. Oh, and, that's fun. And, and that was, it was like looking like a scrapbook of your life, I guess. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people say, well, I'm going to write a book someday. And then they never do. And I was almost one of those people who never did. And my daughter begged me to do it. And Scott England said, I'm going to publish a book on you, Misty. And I'm so glad that happened. Not that the pandemic happened. Yeah, right, of course. But when you have to isolate for, I think it was a whole year yeah. before yeah. When the virus came out. My last time on stage was March 1st of 2020. Wow. I, I flew home from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. I just mm -hmm had done always Patsy Cline in front of 1600 people. And the producer of the show said, no one goes out front after the show tonight. We said, what? Is that when you meet people and sign autographs or sell pictures or what? She said, not tonight. And she wouldn't tell us why. No. And then I got on the plane the next day and everyone was wearing masks. Oh, oh yes, when everything started. Yeah. Yeah, and then when I came home, I begged my daughter to come home for her spring break. She was teaching English in Tokyo. Mm -hmm. Oh, was, okay. Yeah, she was yeah. an English teacher in Tokyo and she came here and then she went to visit her father in New York and everything shut down. Wow. And her teaching position ended. They told her not to come back, it was too dangerous. Mm. So I think we've all been through a lot. And that's yeah. like right when it was about to happen, I seen what was happening. Yeah. And we always go to Jacksonville, Florida a lot because it's just a two hour drive. We yeah, go for a day. Yes. A nice and day trip. And right at the end where it was about everything is about to shut down, I told Sandy, you know, this may be the last weekend for months that we can go to J Jacksonville, Florida. Yeah. So, so we jumped in the car and went down there and spent the day. And I was right. After that, everything shut down. For months, yes. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. Well, they didn't even have, I didn't even get my vaccine till a year after the pandemic hit. So um, I feel fine. You and got I, ours in uh, July or May. May. Yeah. The, the Pfizer or the Moderna? Pfizer. Yeah. I got <laughs> Pfizer also. And I just got my booster because, you know, if you're going to be amongst the public, mm -hmm. It's yeah. not like it's someone staying home. I will be on stage. And I <laughs> feel as safe as possible. And I want my audience, my Facebook friends, my friends out there to feel safe too. And that's the part that people don't get too, like with mm -hmm. what you do. If, if you want to continue in your passion, you have no choice to do that. Because again, you know, they're starting to be where a lot of concert venues and all that are making it where you can't, and you can't perform unless you are. Yeah. And, you know. Yes, yes. Um, next Mother's Day in uh, 2022, Mother's Day, oh, I, yes. I will be at the Carolina Theater. Okay. And uh, they have a requirement you, everybody coming in has to be vaccinated. They don't have that at the Savannah Theater yet. Okay. But, but because I am equity, I have to be vaccinated to yeah. go on stage. Of course. And, but I told my neighbor that, and they said, you know, that makes me feel so much safer. I'm glad to hear that because we'd really like to go out and, and to know that 
everybody on stage and the live band, they're all vaccinated and mm -hmm. you know, the filtration system is all updated. So, good to know. You know, and, and I tried it out. I went to the Savannah Theater in August because I didn't want to invite my friends and family if they were in danger. Yes. Well, I went there and I saw another show, one I wasn't in. And I was fine. And that was in August. So that was fine. Wow. Uh, yeah. Now, when you look back, you know, a lot of people would ask, when did you know you wanted to be an actress? I like to go deeper than that. When did it click for you? This could be a career for you. There was nothing else for me. <laughs> when I was 10 years old, I was directing plays in my mother's garage and she'd put up her clothesline <laughs> with sheets on it for the curtains, you know, and I'd get all the neighborhood kids and my mom would get everybody's picnic benches and put them in the garage and I'd put on shows. Wow. And I, did such a, I had started dancing when I was about four because okay. I, I had a bad leg. And if you read my book, you'll find it. We didn't have much money. And I had this, I was born with this bad leg where I kind of limped along. And uh, the doctor said, my muscles needed to be strengthened in my right leg. And if I could get ballet lessons, you know, that would strengthen them. Oh, wow. we, didn't have, we didn't have the money for that. But my mom, this was in the days when people didn't have clothing dryers, they, they mm -hmm. hung their wash on the line. Oh, really? And my mom saw all this wash on a line and she knew that house belonged to the local dance teacher. Oh, so she went there and she knocked on the door and she said, I see you have wash on the line and I'm a good as ironer as you'll ever get. And I'll iron all your family's clothing in exchange for a dance lessons from my daughter because she needs to wow. wow. break. And my mom used to iron clothes so I could take three dance lessons a week and my leg did get stronger. Wow. And <clears throat> I think that's one of the reasons I got on Hee Haw. And <laughs> <laughs> they used to put me on top of the, you know, a barrel or something or on the hay wagon so yeah. you could see my legs and I'd be clapping and smiling. And Gordy Tap, his nickname for me was Legs because yeah. he thought I had really yeah. pretty legs. But I didn't begin with them. It was years of ballet and tap and jazz and oh, wow. years of my mother ironing. So yeah. I talk about you know, that's perfect lead in for, you know, a lot of people, they see the glory in what you do. But they don't see the grind, the sacrifice, the tears, the struggles it takes, not just to get to your level, but even a career level within the entertainment world. I always want to talk about that side of it, because as you know, a lot of people gloss over it. They think if I have the talent, I can make it. But it's a lot more than that. I mean, if you're not willing to work your guts out, you're not going to make it anyway. So let's talk about some of the sacrifices and struggles you've had to go through to get to where you are. Well... I starved a lot <laughs> when, when I uh, left home, you know, and I had this small little scholarship to an acting workshop and my acting teacher, Mrs. Reiner, uh, she had been, her husband's cousin was Carl Reiner. And I, he, you know, Dick Van Dyke show, he created all those shows. And he called, she called Carl Reiner and she said, I have a student that's very dedicated and I think she's talented and she really could make it, I think, if she wow. moved to LA and, and started auditioning, but she needs guidance and she needs acting lessons. Where should she go? And he said, there's only one uh, place I'd recommend, Estelle Harmon, the actor's workshop. And Estelle mm -hmm. Harmon had been a casting director for Universal. And she had worked with Rock Hudson and Elizabeth Taylor. And what was great about that acting workshop was half of the night you would do scenes from a play, then you'd have mm -hmm. a break. And the other half of the night, they put you on camera. Wow. Oh, wow. Audition. And then at the end of the night, she said she, who she would have cast. Well, the first time I saw myself on camera and I heard this, 
Hey, squeaky voice. <laughs> I just wanted to crawl up under the chair and die. I just, I just didn't <laughs> want to. I, I thought, oh, turn that camera off. Make it stop. You know, and my, my and so I went and I got <clears throat> voice lessons and it was like, I didn't really have any money to eat. And I lived at the Hollywood Studio Club, which was just for women, okay. um, the ages of 17 and 25. Mm -hmm. And they gave you breakfast and they gave you dinner, but nothing in between. Okay. And you didn't show up when they served it. You got nothing. So okay. if you were working or I don't know. Almost like a boot camp. Yeah. yeah. So it was like, I learned um, how to make a thing called ketchup soup. Do you know what that is? <laughs> Yeah. My mother would give me a, a bottle of ketchup. I'd go home once in a while to visit. And then I I had this little car. I drove back to Hollywood and lived at this Hollywood studio club. And I had this little hot plate and I put water in it and then I dump ketchup in it. Oh, and okay. stir it. And that's that's ketchup soup. And people say, oh my gosh. When you were on Hee you had the most beautiful legs and the smallest stomach. And I thought, I was starving. <laughs> wow. You know, it's just, um, you, uh, I needed to have acting lessons and dancing lessons. And then I needed voice lessons because I couldn't get many parts. Why the voice that was way up here? I mean, he wow. loved it, but nobody else did. <laughs> <laughs> so it was I I took singing lessons once a week and I practiced every day and I was never going to be a great singer but I wanted I wanted to lower my speaking voice so I could yeah, do okay. a part yeah, so. and about six months into the lessons the instructor said his name was Lee Sweetland he said I don't want to scare you but if you keep practicing, you're going to be able to sing one day. <laughs> you're not going to do Broadway shows, but yeah. you will be able to sing with other people and to do funny <laughs> songs here and there. And he was right. Wow. I, did, wow. I did the national tour of Little Abner. I was Daisy May and Joe Namath was Little Abner. Wow. Oh. So, and then I was in Minnie Pearl's All Jack Band. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> and I was a gossipy girl for years around the wash tub. Mm -hmm. So I was able to sing with my cast. And actually, I got more, um, what do they call it? Screen time? Because yeah. the producer came out the first time we did the gossipy skit. They had developed that skit for the girls on Hee Haw because the men had the moonshiners. Oh, we, yeah. <laughs> we had these rags in our hair and they were gone and we were over our wash tub mm -hmm. and we were singing this little song. And mm -hmm. then it said, cut, cut, stop, stop girls. And then the producer came out, Sam Novello, and he said, girls, this is a new skit and we want it to be funny. But if you all sing perfectly, it's not <laughs> <laughs> Would I get a volunteer to kind of sing real loud or off key and my hand went up, you know, Ganelle Hutton's like, I, do that. I have a recording yeah. contract, you know, but Lulu and I were all in on that. And uh, then Ronnie Stoneman got in there too. And I think our, our voices could have cracked glass, I think, <laughs> but it was very, it was very memorable. You know, yeah. and then they developed um, the All Jug Band, which was Minnie Pearl was on piano, and mm -hmm. all the girls uh, played moonshine jugs. So it it was a fun career, and and no, I I never recorded big records, but <laughs> I, but I remember you Sammy so Davis, Sammy Davis Jr. came on Hee Haw one time. When I was in the cornfield with him, and they had all the girls sing around him, a gossip, mm -hmm. and he never forgot my voice. <laughs> he, put, oh, he, he put his finger in his ear and went like this as I was singing. 
you know, I've had a, um, you know, a lot of bad things happen in my life, a lot of good things, but I told Scott England, my publisher, you've probably written a lot of books on people, on country stars who were more famous than me and, and made more money. But I'll tell you one thing, nobody ever had more fun than me. <laughs> That's yeah. how I feel. I'm the type of person to where if I can't have fun, I don't want to do it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And again, some people say I need to grow up and all I've been told that all oh, my yeah, life. Yeah, like you're Peter Pan. <clears throat> I'm but, Peter Pan yeah. syndrome and all of that. But you know, again, we're here. We've been married 19 years. We got two kids. I mean, we're doing something right. We've always worked together. We've always worked together. And you're doing something you love, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then this show comes along and it's like, I had this crazy idea for us to do this. We had no idea where it would lead to. No idea. And it was just one of them things where I remember the very first time we interviewed um, back January 3rd, 2020. And it was like, when we got off, I told Sam, this is it. This is what we are supposed to do. <laughs> and it's just found that, your calling. That, and You're I get so here. frustrated. Like when we take, when, you know, I love Nashville. We go to Nashville quite a bit. But when we're there four, five, six days, seven days, it's like I'm itching for to do a show. And, I, and you know, so I have to take like a week off from the show. And it, it frustrates me. But then I come back and I'm all refreshed and able to do it again. Oh, I'm so glad for both of you. <clears throat> and I expect you to come see my show. We oh know. yes, we always know. Patsy Klein. Yeah. I think we just have the best time, and uh, you know, I, a lot of my Facebook friends—they're coming from Florida, from Georgia, oh, wow. from North Carolina, and I've even got some coming from Tennessee oh, to wow. see Patsy Klein. And they said, "How will you know we're there?" And I said, "You laugh and clap a lot." And and a curtain call, just stand up and go, Misty, and I will see you. I will see you. <laughs> <laughs> so as you know, it takes a village to do what you do. And a lot of people, they see you as the star, but they don't see the team behind you. In our opinion, teams never get the love they, they deserve. So take a few moments just to tell us about the team that's behind you. My team, and I call it a force. <laughs> I have um, I have certain musical directors that I absolutely love, like Bobby Hamilton, Michael Sansonia. I have a stage manager when I travel to do one nighter. She lives in Texas. Her oh, name yeah. is Fran Rosenthal, and she comes in. She flies in to where I'm going to be. And she goes to what they call a prop house. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you come see always Patsy Klein, and I've recreated the uh, the Grand Old Opry for you. Oh. This kitchen, oh. the Esquire Ballroom, and the end in heaven when Patsy's in heaven. I've created. Oh, yeah. heaven. But Fran has flown in to whatever city I'm going to be. She rents a semi, and oh. she drives to a prop house and she rents all the things I need like Louise's kitchen table a okay. jukebox, and we needed a, and then she drives to the theater she has the um, backstage crew they come in a certain amount of hours and they load in my set the night before and they arrange it and as the director I'm in there working with the lighting director, I have a plot list of all the lights I want. And then there are the people we like, say when we do the Carolina theater, we'll do a matinee. Mm -hmm. okay. I'll be in there really early. The band will be loading in. The grips will be setting up all the wires for them. And we have a wardrobe person who will be steaming all of Patsy's costumes to get the wrinkles out. And there'll be a lady, a catering lady, mm -hmm. and she will make us lunch in one of the rooms so we can all eat. So these are people uh, that they're just so special to me. And I, as the director, really lean on 
my lighting director, my musical director, and my stage manager. Uh -huh. So, and then uh, my husband, Barry Singer, he uh, has done musical shows, like he did 32 weeks of shows at the El Dorado Casino in Reno, and he's done in Atlantic City. You know, uh, he's done 42nd Street, he's got a show forever Motown, uh, he's done, produced Buddy Holly stuff. I mean, he's been oh. everywhere. And he knew he was a promoter. He's a promoter. He did a lot of shows with Johnny Cash and um, Willie Nelson. Uh, so he has worked with a lot of big stars. Yeah. And yeah. when I need something, he is my promoter. I mean, he got in touch with you to arrange this interview. And... He, I've had to be very careful with him because he's slightly older than me. And I, I just worry about him going into crowds. So I make him wear a mask. Okay, oh, they yeah. wear your mask because <laughs> everybody's vaccinated. And mm -hmm. I feel, you know, well, um, a lot of people will get COVID and get over it, but a lot of older people won't. Yep. That's right. That's pretty much what's happening. It yeah. Is. yeah wear that mask and uh, a prayer every morning uh, to be guided and to keep me safe and healthy and the people I love and my family safe and healthy mm -hmm. and to kind of have God guide me to the way mm -hmm. I feel, yeah. have spirit guide me. And yeah. I think that's yeah. what yeah. led me to South Carolina, you know, because I was living in California and I I had worked so long in Nashville and then I was up uh, what they call New England. And then mm -hmm. I had left and I got a divorce and then I only had a two-year-old baby. So that was a whole thing. But oh, now God. I'm in South Carolina and I'm very happy here for this time of my life because you know that song? Nothing could be finer than to be in Carolina. Oh, yeah. you know, I, I feel that every morning I get up so what part of South Carolina? No, I'm not going to tell you that. <laughs> not my fans, but I don't particularly want them to know exactly where I live. I understand. <laughs> yes. um, I will say this. It's on an island. Ah, got it. I'm on an island. And mm. I thought at, you know, being on TV is one thing. And I was kind of always secluded and. I had bars on my window in Hollywood. I had a security guard. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. after I got married and divorced, I was a single mom. I always tried to protect my child. But then, you know, I was off TV for such a long time. And I do appearances now and then. Yeah. But I was doing stage. And I thought, I'm at the age now. Nobody's going to bother me anymore. You know, it's yeah. not like the sex symbol anymore and something like that. But I am funny and energetic on stage and I learned how to direct and I've been directing always Patsy Klein for 20 years. Wow. Oh, wow. 20 years. When, you, when you see one of the productions that I have mm -hmm. directed, it is authentic. It, from the lady I play, I knew that lady, I knew Louise and mm -hmm. I play her just the way she was. And mm -hmm. uh, recreate I, the Grand Old Opry for you the way I knew it. Because yeah. our hee-haw stage was right behind the Opry. And we shared dressing rooms with the Grand Old Opry and what they call a green, ro green room where mm -hmm. all the, the performers gathered. And so I know about that. And that for me is authentic. Yeah. 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 And I think I told you my first night of playing Louise in Always Patsy Klein, my opening night was in Branson, Missouri. Wow. Oh, Branson Theater mm -hmm. at Tony Orlando. And opening night, Charlie Dick flew in from Nashville, and that was Patsy's husband. Oh, he's a widower. And mm -hmm. it was in charge of the Patsy Klein estate. And in order to be in the show in the old days, he had to approve of it. Wow. He wow. came to my opening night 
And he took uh, me and Kay Crow, who was my Patsy at the time, to dinner the next day and said, Misty, you're just as funny as you were on Hee Haw, and I think you're going to do just fine and always Patsy Cline. Wow. So that was like a, a little blessing for me. Yes, absolutely. So the reason I'm telling you this, so I've been on stage all this time, and I go to Hilton Head to do always Patsy Cline. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. They got no doors on the dressing room. Really? Oh, no. <laughs> they, they got like a drape. You know, wow. <laughs> they do nice productions at this little Main Street Theater. Well, what, during um, intermission, I'm in my dressing room and P mm -hmm. Patsy Singer's in her dressing room and we just got these little drapes and I hear her scream and I hear her dressing room. Oh. No, sir, you can't come in here. This is a lady's dressing room. And he goes, I gotta see Misty. I got to see Misty. <laughs> and he's yelling my name. And I know I'm the only other room, uh, you know, backstage. Yeah. And he's gotten backstage and it scared me. Oh, and, and there were drapes and I knew he could get in. Yeah. So I, I was in this big room and they had a lot of costumes from other shows. Mm -hmm. And they had just done a show like Alice in Wonderland or something. Okay. I ran to the back wall and I hid in the turtle outfit. <laughs> Uh, he yeah. he broke into my dressing room yelling and screaming for me and finally wow. one of the ushers came and got him and took him out yes but, but that kind of scared me you know oh, yeah. yes because you wouldn't be expecting that wow so when i moved i moved to an island yeah and you cannot get on this island <laughs> and then you go through this little strip of land through a guard gate and yes. there's water on both sides of it and, and and there are alligators in there Ooh, <laughs> alligators yes that's what better protection there well, i feel pretty safe <laughs> yes <laughs> love that now speaking of teams we have a third co-host our little nine-year-old christopher that we let come on and ask a few questions so, yes so, so Sandy's oh, gonna i'll go, go get him Get him real quick. And we've got a two and a half year old daughter that when she gets older, she'll be plugged into our show too. Because we are oh, a family. How family. lovely. How lovely. Trying to start them out young. Well, I love that age. Well, when my daughter was three, my mother used to go to the theater with her and she'd watch her while I was on stage. And there was a, before pandemic, there was a part in Always Betsy Klein where Louise runs down stage and she dances with people in the audience. Oh, well. I can't do that no more. But, <laughs> and my mother would let her go, and my daughter would run and she would dance with me. Hello, Christopher. Hi, Misty Rosa. Was it very food? Hi. <laughs> uh, so what would uh, you like to ask food. me? Huh? What is my favorite? Well, it used to be chocolate, but I can't eat that. Uh, want it. I'd say, um, uh roast chicken with mashed potatoes mm. oh i just love that i love that and i love pasta and i love fresh squeezed orange juice which you know where you go and you pick the orange off the tree and you bring it in and, and squeeze it what's your favorite food mine is pizza pizza <laughs> mm. well we got a lot of pizza places in, uh, around where i live Mm -hmm. And next, I right, was a favorite TV show. Well, my favorite TV show was Hee Haw. He <laughs> <laughs> yeah. laughed at me. He's like, "What is Hee Haw?" Because he and, and I'm still watching it. Well, do you know that Hee Haw <laughs> has run continuously for 50 years? Long it is show, the long, it's a long time, isn't it? It yeah. is the longest running country TV show in the history of television. So it must start at the year I was born. I just turned 50. It was, oh, congratulations. It started in 1969, and I was still too young to I be. I was born old. in 71, so I guess it started in that between. Oh, and I started in 72. My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What's yours? Ah. Oh. Okay, yeah, SpongeBob. SpongeBob. That's my been around daughter, for a while too. Yeah. My my daughter liked that a lot. 
<laughs> yeah, he's probably watched every episode. Oh, yeah. Well, maybe not everyone. They're still showing you one. <laughs> That's a new one. Yeah. And it's been great because he watches a lot of the Nickelodeon and Disney shows. So a lot of the people that's been on his shows, we've been able to bring on our show for him to talk to. Wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> What's a very movie? What is my favorite movie? Oh, probably whatever I'm seeing at the time. Um, <laughs> Live in the moment, <laughs> right? Well, you know, I liked Funny Girl, of course, and The Notebook, of course, and I like tender films. Uh, but then everything has changed. So, I, I mean, the technology today and the fact that they can film on location outside, they can, they can go to Europe or New Zealand. It's just so different from when I was a child and the colors and the stunts and I still like a good story. Oh yeah, like that's important. I, I like that more than special effects. I mean, I like special effects, but I still like a really good story. What's yours? Mine is the Minions movie. Oh, okay. <laughs> His shirt's even <laughs> got Minions. <laughs> 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 well, I want to thank you for today. This was wonderful. Yeah. And I'm glad we figured out the Zoom thing. So yeah. your dad is very good at this new technology. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bye, Dave. Bye. Bye, Christopher. <laughs> yeah, he, he's been on almost every episode. He, he loves it. And we can't imagine not having him on now. Yeah. Right. So any final parting words as we close out for you? Well, I hope people will still be friends with me on Facebook and I hope they buy my book and I hope they come to see me and always Patsy Klein. And I'm just so happy to still be alive at this, <laughs> at my age and be able to perform. And I hope it all goes well <laughs> at the Savannah Theater. And I just want people to know that watched me, who bought my book, who come to my shows, it means everything to me. And that we're on earth together at this time. And, and they know me and I'm getting to know them. So you two better come see me live in person. Oh, we will. <laughs> I'll ask the last question here. What would you like for your legacy to be? What do you want, want to be most known and remembered for? She made people smile. Oh, that's beautiful. You made us smile. You made us smile today. We so Thank enjoyed you. this. This was so fun. Thank you. Well, good luck with your new show. I think Thank it's you. taking off like gangbusters and God bless you both. Right, same oh, to you. Same to you. And you have a great day. Thanks for your time today. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>